Hey guys, welcome to How to Paint a Mortise Engine, Part 1. Here's your paint list. After priming the model with Stino Res Black Primer, I used Goblin Green to start laying in the green. The second highlight is a mixture of goblin green and dead flesh. This is where we start to concentrate on the areas of broad highlights. So the second highlight we use bone white and you don't really want to cover up the previous color but if you do it's not going to hurt you that much we're really just kind of blocking in the highlights figuring out where we want them for the final paint job so if you happen to go over all of the previous color who cares we're gonna blend it all together here Now we use dead white to try to get those highlights that we blocked in before and exaggerate them. So the previous colors, that's where you were kind of feeling out where you wanted the points of interest, which I chose the faces and then various areas around them. Now we're going to use green ink to kind of pull the highlights back down. And that's what's cool about using white and then inks to kind of put a color glaze over the whole thing is that if you highlight too much, you can always bring it back down using an ink and then re-highlight just in case you put too much ink on and kill the highlight and you can keep going back and forth. I was going to do the back and forth thing with white and green ink and I decided, hey, I have fluorescent green here in the paint rack. Let's go ahead and give that a try. See how that looks. It started to look really good and that helps because we had white underneath that with a little bit of green ink over it. So the fluorescent pops really well. It blends nicely because it's not very opaque. It wouldn't work if we went on just straight black, but because we had those previous highlight layers, it worked really well.
So since we did like three highlight colors, you can get overspray into a lot of the shadow areas. So we're going to use this black green ink to kind of bring those shadow areas back to increase the contrast. So it's not all highlights and we actually have some nice shadows here and there. I wanted the smoke to look like smoke, so I'm using a technique that I learned from Ed Hubs here on YouTube, and he uses a scotch Bright pad and sprays through it to give kind of a cloud effect. And so I was playing around with it. I think it's gonna work for what we need it for. So the white cloudy smoke is a little too bright, brighter than the ghosts themselves, and it became the focal point. So I mixed a turquoise ink, mixing one part blue ink and two parts green ink, and thinning that down heavily, like 10 parts water to one part paint, slowly going over all the smoke and trying to bring the brightness down. And this is the first pass, so it's very diluted.
After a quick blow dry, we begin with this second layer. And this time we mixed it five parts water to one part paint. And this we're concentrating on the transition where it goes from ghost or undead horde spirit things into the smoke. And we're just softening that transition so it looks a little bit better. We're about to do edge highlighting, so remember to use the side of the brush when possible. It's much easier. Now we use a mixture of dead white and livery green to do the edge highlighting. So the turquoise ink kind of killed our highlights in the cloud and we lost our effect on that smoke. So we're going to take some more scotch bright, kind of rip it up more so we have some bigger holes to spray through and come back with some white and bring some of those highlights back.
Since the hoard is completed, we will start working on the platform, which I base coated with Stino Res Black Primer, and now we're going over it with gunmetal. I then mix a wash of smoky ink and I mix it one to one with some future floor shine. I think over in the UK it's called Johnson's Clear and a little bit of water and some dish soap. So that helps it break surface tension. There I add a little bit more Johnson's Clear. Just go over all the metal. I'm trying to make it grungy and we know that I love to use smoky ink for that. And now we airbrush a bunch of different things with the first highlight using silver. Now I wanted to, actually I saw a bunch of people painting these upper torsos of these skeletons like actual bone color and yeah, it just didn't look right to me like the way you have to blend it, the organic in with whatever you think this platform is made out of. When I looked at it all silver after we did the base coat, I thought of it as being like a Geiger sculpture where it would be just all metallic. The skeletons were just a style thing, so I decided to keep them silver. So that's pretty much it for this video. We got the horde done and the banshees are painted the same way the horde is done. I just didn't record them with the horde because if you can do the horde, you can do them too. Stay tuned for part two and we'll continue working on the platform. See you guys next time.